Good afternoon, Nerd Fam, and welcome back to Salt Lake City, Utah. We are here coming to the back end of day two of our three days of coverage on theCUBE. My name's Savannah Peterson, here with, you guessed it, Rob Strecce. Glad to be here with you. <laughs> yeah? It's, yeah, this is great. I, I, again, data feeds AI. You can't do AI without data. It's going to be distributed more inference everywhere, the, the complexity of it, but it's not just Gen AI, and I think that's a big piece of it, and I can't wait to You've get into this. You've actually said less about that this week than I expected, now that I'm you mention it. I'm ecstatic about that. Yeah, <laughs> me I'm too. Well, we've got people who, who, who like to talk about real stories here with us. Venkat, welcome back. Thank you for spending Glad time with us. We love having you, and Amir, so lovely that you could join us today as well. Thank you, great to be here. Yeah, this is, this is a fun one. I got to start where we left off last time we saw each other, Venkat, because we were starting the, the foundational chorus for our future rap song. <laughs> D-Bass for the masses. How D -bass things? for the masses. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> we just got to get one of the production boys yeah. going with the yeah. beat, guys. We got to get, we gotta get yeah. a little beat going from you guys. Where, where are we at now compared to when we talked last time? That's no, great, yeah. I think, you know, we're, I think, in one of the most interesting times in the history of tech, right? Actually, in the history of mankind, right, I would say, right? I mean, because I think we're a person kind to be. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. bless you for that. Thank you. You yeah. get a cookie. So, you know, I, I think where, where, this, uh, where we are going, where we have been is that obviously we started out from this machine-centric world, but did a little bit of app-centric stuff with Kubernetes and Cloud Native. But where we are seeing now is that a lot of the enterprise workloads and everything we look around us, there is a generous amount of AI coming in, right? I mean, there's, but you know, this is not something that's overnight, right? I mean, yeah. it's been, you know, these kind of technologies, they become overnight sensations, but they take long time to develop, right? And Portworx has always actually back-ended AI workloads, even all the way back to 2017. You know, we have had helped our customers build autonomous cars, machine vision, and you know, and most of the uh, large language models and and you know, supervised and unsupervised machine learning models actually run on Kubernetes. They started running on Kubernetes a long time ago, but what we see now is this huge, you know, uh, outgrowth in all of these models coming out, and a lot of research and a lot of development that has been going on for many years are actually now out there for people to, you know, take advantage of. So we're in very interesting times and we have evolved Portworx to become more of a platform, right? Where yeah. it's your one-stop shop for all of your cloud native data needs. So we go from, you know, we're no longer just storage, we're no longer just data protection, we're no longer just DBAS for all, <laughs> you know, we are a Portworx platform for all of your cloud native data needs. And it's resonating a lot with our customers because it helps them I go uh, take take them along with their journey. They start off, but the product evolves with their needs, and they're able to turn on features that they need, and they continue to take advantage of the investment they have made. So, it's been great. The show has been amazing, and we have had some great conversations. So, super happy to share it with all of you here. Yeah, I love it, and so exciting. Speaking of customers enjoying the tools, I suspect that's why you brought Amir from T-Mobile. How long have you two been working together? Give me a little lay of the land. Well, we've uh, been in partners with Portworks since the beginning of the Kubernetes journey at T-Mobile. Oh, awesome. Um, How so, long has that journey been, just out of curiosity? Uh, 2017, 18, yeah, right oh, in there. 2017, yeah. yeah. So you're OGs. Yes. Yeah. You, were on, you were on the early adoption train, yeah, nice. For yeah. sure, yeah. yeah. And, and so when you were evaluating who to go on that journey with you, how did, you how did you know that they were the, uh, the chosen one? I know there's a lot of love here, so how did oh, you know yeah. they were the one? <laughs> Back with, the, in, with that history, there was uh, less choices. Um, so we still did evaluation, but, but it was a very a smaller landscape and a very clear winner. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and, and still a very clear winner in the space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and again, when you look at it, I mean, T-Mobile, it, it, you're a service provider, you have a lot of different applications and application needs, you're, doing, you're getting into AI, you have, yeah. you have customer facing apps, you have internal facing apps, and you're really handling the platform engineering piece of it. So your customers are actually the developers who are actually building these apps. That's talk, right. talk to about how Portworks is enabling you from a data management perspective to really service those developers in a better way. Sure, sure. We, I think we have reasonable scale, a couple hundred 
clusters, yeah. tens of thousands of nodes. It's a, a humble a way of putting it. Yeah, yeah and, and, and far more application teams than I can, I can know independently. So really it's getting out of their way. It's giving a, an ability to have self-service. It's ability for them to trust and not have to interact with us. An ability for us to do maintenance and upkeep and not impact them at all. Um, so, it's, so, it's, so it's a bit of, hey, I apply my manifest, I have my storage, and I don't need to talk to anybody else. So that's, that's the, the velocity that we try to provide for our developers. Yeah. And, and that scalability has to be a, a key factor. I mean, again, operating at, I mean, people talk about cloud scale. I mean, telco cloud scale is, is a whole nother set. And there, it's not only just the scalability, but it's the reliability that has to be there as well. Correct. Talk to how you've seen that evolve as well and where you see that going and what it means to your developers. Sure, sure. I, you know, back in the day I was a storage admin and uh, we've all had that dreaded data unavailable and the, the pain that comes with that. And when I started working with Kubernetes, I had a lot of you know, nerves, like how, how good is the storage going to be here? And um, it's been very, very good for us. We, in the early days, had R3 replicas. Uh, again, because we didn't, you know, building trust, like how, you know, how reliable is it going to be? We've been able to step down to R2s um, and uh, been very happy with, with data uptime and, and performance as well. And that's, that's cost savings right, right, right there. There's ROI yeah. that you've been able to build in. Uh, that has to not only help, you know, your boss must be happy about that, yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. And, but it helps also with folks that are developing on top of that to know that you have that reliability there. And again, they just can, they don't have to focus on any of that. Right, right. So is it a big piece of what you try to provide based on Portworx is making it basically transparent to them. And it's like, hey, we, we have this covered. You don't have to worry, just go and develop. Yeah. Yeah, for, for sure, you know, we, we have storage classes, we have a very small amount of documentation, and it, it works for this very large user base, so I've uh, been happy with that. And, and performance as well, um, you know, in the beginning, uh, much more stateless apps in, in Kubernetes, and uh, definitely not the case anymore, and we do have some busy storage workloads, um, and uh, again, happy with the performance, and uh, uh, not fighting too many battles with that. Fighting less battles is something that we all enjoy. Yeah. I'm curious, Venkat, because obviously to collaborate well, what is the feedback loop like as you're continuing to build new products and features with customers like Amir? Yes, uh, that's a great question. You know, I always tell our customers, uh, consider, us, consider us as an extension of your team, right? That we are your partners, not just vendors. So we partner with them, like you know, Amir and his team, and you know, the T-Mobile team, we partnered with them at the beginning of their cloud, uh, cloud native Kubernetes journey, right? And to a large extent, a lot of things we have built, uh, you know, I have to give a lot of credit to our customers and partners who kind of guided us in what their use case is and how we can better serve their use case. So some of the stuff we have built are like co-created along with our customers, which is great because we look at it and we see, you know, how does this apply to the broader market? Can we take this and help other customers, and absolutely, right? Many of the stuff we have built have, you know, been, we have been able to deploy in many of our global 2,000 customers. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the announcements we have made, you know, in, in the KubeCon, right? I mean, we have actually done a couple of uh, great announcements. One is we're extending our platform to support vector databases and large language models and kind of make it, now uh, this is the next thing we are going to use in the next cube, is kind of GPT Anywhere stack. Mm. Right? So you know you can go build your generative AI stack, your machine learning stack anywhere, because Portbox is a multi-cloud platform. You can build your models in, you know, in your data center, you can deploy your models in the cloud closer to your uh, applications and users, right? I mean, Portbox enables that, right? And we made that announcement. We have also extended our platform to be even more enterprise ready, to be more self-service developer friendly with all the security controls, right? I mean, one of the most important things for enterprises today, along with velocity and developer productivity, is security and governance, right? So we added that into a platform, which is part of the other announcement we made. And this is these two, we have been working closely with our customers, maturing how they should look like, how they're going to surface and use it. So it's kind of like look at the feedback loop there, right? The third thing, which is we've been intently listening to our customers, and there's this big trend about how do you modernize your virtualization platform? Yeah. Because of all the market pressures around the Broadcom acquisition and how customers are looking for alternatives. And again, listening to our customers, we heard loud and clear that they are choosing 
Kubernetes as the standard for modernizing their infrastructure, right? They are coming from one legacy platform and they don't want to generally go to another legacy platform because this is a 10 year, 15 year investment they make and they want to modernize their deployment. So our customers came back and said, how do you support VMs in Kubernetes with KubeWork? So we are announcing support for you know, modern virtualization, based Kubernetes based virtualization. We're working with uh, the likes of Red Hat and Rancher and supporting their virtualization platforms. And that's another uh, support we announced today. So again, working closely with our customers, we are now customers in production, going to production in thousands of VMs, uh, you know, and modernizing their virtualization architecture as well. So this is the process of co-creating, working with them, working with Amir and team. They were the, one of the first ones to tell us, hey, VMs are coming to our Kubernetes platform, are you ready? Right, the yeah. whole metal as a service yeah. that uh, Amir spoke about, right? So, yeah, we started there and now we see that as a major trend and we're ready to support the, not just the customers, the industry as well. Love it, that. And it, that must play really well, again, with that simplification and really making developers more productive because again, right. I, I'm assuming you're, you're serving this up to them, they go in and choose what storage you know, type they need, Correct. and they're off and running, and, and they can then just start to develop. And you, you, we were talking beforehand, and you said you actually have to think a little bit more like as a developer about what apps they're building. Talk to that a little bit. Sure, sure, yeah. I mean, it, 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 that's a partnership as well. The, the more that I can understand the best uh, coding paradigms along with my infrastructure role, the more I, you know, we, we can work together to, to deal with all the complexity that comes at a, at a you know, large scale and, and that comes, that's kind of inherent in Kubernetes. Um, I was going to mention, we've also been really happy. We, we run uh, Kubernetes in a virtualized environment. Uh, unfortunately, the challenges with virtualization lately. Uh, and we've now moved to bare metal. Um, and that is going to be a much larger part uh, of our platform. And Portworx runs on both. Um, we have the same feature set, we have the same uh, user experience, regardless of platform, and that's, uh, that's a very um, uh, nice feature to have for us. Yeah, so whoever's supplying, and you don't have to go into that, but they're using the upstream as the KubeVert project that's been around yeah. since about 2016 now, so we're almost getting at 10 years of that yeah. being developed and stuff like that, but it really started to take off in 2018, and funny enough, in the last year. I don't know what happened in the last <laughs> yeah, year that right. changed that. Talk to that, is do you have your developers are loving the flexibility that Portworks is providing because it doesn't matter if it's a container or a, a VM that they're trying to protect, they just go into the portal and be able to protect it and pick their storage classes? Yeah, and I, yes, and I, and I think the good thing is they haven't had to get into that space too much because we've had a good track record of performance and availability, and so they, they trust uh, our recommendations and, and the platform that we have, and it is just maybe like one less thing to worry about, um, which, which you know frees us both up. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the bare metal thing, we're hearing that a lot more, mm -hmm. not surprisingly. Uh, have you seen any uh, performance gains? Have you seen this work really well with your partnership with Portworks and how they're going? We, as far as benchmarking, I, 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 I don't think we've had anything to necessarily get really good numerical comparison, but I, I'll admit the first time I set it up and you're seeing Kubernetes calling a storage array and you're seeing like, like real, you know, LUNs uh, provision and then show up in Kubernetes. It was kind of like, well, that, that is cool. Uh, it's, it's neat and it is um, not as much configuration as I thought it would be and, and, and reliability has been good as well. Uh, I can see why you picked the right partner early on and they've been able to grow with you throughout the evolution of this. No surprise Absolutely, there. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And uh, it's got to feel good for you to hear, I bet. <laughs> yeah. I, feel it's, it's, I feel great hearing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gentlemen, this, this segment has flown by, but I have one final question for both of you. Venkat, you might know where I'm going with this, so I'm going to bring it to you first. When we have you both on theCUBE, again, to talk about the next evolution of your partnership, let's call it in London at KubeCon, what do you hope to be able to say then that you can't say today? I'll let you think about it for okay. a second, Amir. Don't worry, right. I'm going to Venkat. He's right. got that grin, he's got this. <laughs> I mean, the possibilities are endless, right? But definitely what I think we'll be, I'll be giving you an update on, uh, you know, a rapid adoption of uh, the modern virtualization platform, right? And I, I'm, I'm looking forward to share with you some of the 
interesting customer journeys, you know, potentially with the Amiran team and others as well, right? Yeah. Um, I think it's a significant industry, uh, industry change shift that's happening. Um, I think you're going to see a lot more of how, uh, you know, organizations are getting to more and more building their own generative AI, especially around inference, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think the training is going to be done by the large cloud providers and, you know, and, and all the you know, big companies. But there's a ton of Gen AI applications and machine learning applications at the inference level, and we're going to empower and enable them to move faster to improve, improve their uh, experience, right? See, if you look at this, this is a journey of digital experience. Yeah. The whole Kubernetes cloud native was, how do you deliver digital experience faster, right? So AI augments it, accelerates it, and kind of brings a natural language interface to all of our interactions, right? So I look, I'm looking forward to sharing some of that with you all. And then how Portworx as a platform, as a service, is powering this in all the clouds. So absolutely, yeah. We it's can't wait. We can, we can add that into the lyrics of our song. Absolutely. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be building it up. <laughs> how do we start the next segment with actually a cloud native app? I feel like we, we need compose. to. Yeah, I, I know, I think, yeah. I think that's, we're committing we to that, that work. Yeah. I, I love that. I think that would be great. Anderson on our production team can play a million instruments, so we can, <laughs> we can pull him into this. We've got a whole thing going on. Amir, what about you? What do you hope's changed in the next six months? Sure, I would love to see our platform to continue to, to grow as, as it is at a, at a, at a fast clip. Um, and be able to really unlock uh, more ap application uh, freedom on Kubernetes, right? Um, it, it, more VMs running there and just to see this platform grow and become um, um, the, 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 almost the total majority of our infrastructure, that would be great. I want to hear you say it's helping you get inference out to the towers. That's and, <laughs> and how you're providing that customers. But that uh, maybe yeah. maybe maybe your developer. That's on more on your developers self. So, <laughs> but that, I think it sounds it thing. sounds good. Yeah. yeah, it's an important thing to note that they this team supports thousands of developers, and they are developing applications yeah. all the way from their enterprise back office apps to you know 5G apps, core you know, uh, call processing apps, and SIM apps, like eSIMs e and all of that. So this platform powers a oh, ton of different applications, you know, all the way from the towers to back office, right? It's so, great. Yeah. It's the very powerful. Flexibility is yeah. awesome, and scalability. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the majority of our applications run within Kubernetes now, I, and uh, just the efficiency we're getting compared to the architectures before is, is pretty amazing. It's awesome. Yeah. We love to hear it. Thank you both so much for coming to hang out with us. Thank you. This is fun as always. Your smiles are contagious too. This yes. is, we need that energy in the afternoon. It's just Absolutely. wonderful. We really, really appreciate it. Rob, thank you. As always, a joy. Always. Always a joy. I thank all of you for tuning in, our fabulous community, wherever you might be today. We're here in Salt Lake City, Utah, coming to the conclusion of day two of KubeCon North America. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.